Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Russ Clark. Uh, I'm the business development manager at BTRG. Uh, thank you for joining today. We, we appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day to, uh, to join us in this webinar around the fast track upgrade to 9.2. Um, couple of housekeeping items to go over before we get started today. We have uh, uh, all listeners in listen only mode. If you wish to ask a question, you can do so in the, um, the text box within the panel to the right. Um, we don't anticipate answering questions at the end of the webinar, but what we typically will do is we'll compile all those questions and send out an email with answers to all of them to all attendees and registrants. Today's session is being recorded by early next week. You should receive a follow-up email with a link to the webinar replay. Um, feel free to share that with your coworkers or anyone else you think may be interested. Uh, to get things started, I'd like to introduce our two hosts for today's webinar. We have our, uh, Rob Fox and Don Gardner. Rob is our Senior Vice President of uh, Consultant Delivery, and Doug Garner is our Director of Technology. They have a lot of great content for you today, so without any further delay, I'll turn things over to Rob. Rob, go ahead, take it away. Great, thanks, Russ. Um, so there's my picture, so you can see me. Uh, I've been with BTRG now for, uh, this is actually my 10th year, so I'm expecting a plaque anytime soon. Um, and prior to that, I was actually a PeopleSoft consultant for another 10 years, so my background is, have, I have about 20 years experience in PeopleSoft. Uh, Don, maybe introduce yourself. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Gardner. Uh, I've got about seven years with BTRG, so I've got a little ways to go for my plaque. Uh, I've been working with PeopleSoft since the uh, beta version of financials back on point eight of GL and AP. I don't even want to mention how long ago that actually was. Great. Thanks, Don. So I uh, just wanted to run through the agenda. Um, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the options for our PeopleSoft users uh, that are not on 9.2. Then I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of moving to 9.2 uh, and then sum up what our goal is uh, going forward. Then I'm going to hand it over to Don and Don's going to walk you through our upgrade approaches, what our fast track methodology is, and he's going to focus on a couple of areas, but the main ones are customizations, reporting, security, and testing. So, you know, when it's always a little difficult, right, when you're putting a slide together or a deck together where to start. Um, so I figure I'm going to start with some of the options because I know everyone, I'm assuming everyone on the call is at least thinking of going to 9.2, but you may not know for sure or you may have different options. So I thought I'd just lay out some of the options. Now, you probably have many options, right, but I've chosen these three. The first is to basically write out where you're at now and go to the end of support and beyond. So that's kind of the do nothing option. And we've seen some of our some of our customers uh, do this. The second option is to migrate to an Oracle Cloud HCM or ERP solution, which we absolutely support. And the third option, which is really the focus of this webinar, is to upgrade to 9.2. And that could either be an on-premise upgrade or a PeopleSoft on the cloud upgrade. Because once you're on 9.2, then you're positioned to either stay on 9.2 and add features or you know, move to the Oracle Cloud from 9.2. So those are the three things I want to start with. <clears throat> so the first option, PeopleSoft, you know, is basically, again, the, the do-nothing option, uh, but I'm sure you've probably seen these dates, uh, and, you know, the end of the support window is coming up. So extended support for PeopleSoft 9.1 ends at the end of this year, January of 2018. So you're really, you are forced to make a decision. So, you know, even if it's doing nothing, I think you need to look at the different options you have. So let's start with the, that first option. What I try to do here is put together an evaluation model. Uh, to look at three different three different criteria uh, for deciding whether it's a good idea to stay on 9.1 uh, and write it out. So the first one is it's you know the world is driven by money. So the first one I wanted to look at is the software cost, and I broke that into maintenance fees and upgrade costs. So of course you know your maintenance fees are the the wonderful fees you pay Oracle every year, and upgrade costs are those fees you know for just doing an upgrade. So if you're looking at those, if you're doing, if you're not upgrading and you're going off support, you have an initial savings certainly just by doing nothing. Now to balance that out, of course, you're going to need some type of support. So you know, software tickets, bug fixes, things break, you know, during the uh, during the course of of any any business year. You also have you know patches and bundles. So your regulatory bundles like your tax updates and uh, 1099 updates, all those things you do need to account for or if you go off of, off of the Oracle support. So it does require some investment, right? I mean, there's, there's no way around that. So you have either it's, you're doing it internally, so it's an internal investment, or you're going to a third party. 
So those are the typical things we see that make up a, a true you know, ROI. Uh, people will look at these costs. Now, the one thing I, I do want to point out is the third thing, and, and we don't see a lot of people, you know, sometimes we don't see enough focus on, on this, but what's your overall strategy here? And I broke this down into two different extremes. This, the extreme of transactional only, so your system is only used for transactions, or your system is strategic. Now, if you're transactional only, you only want the system to, you know, enter, enter AP vouchers and pay people, then you're probably leaning to a status quo model where the ROI is the most important factor. Uh, and again, we have seen people do this. However, if you're considered your, your system is strategic, well, then that's absolutely the wrong option for you. I think you've got, you've got other choices there. I just want to explain what I mean also by transactional and strategic. So I, I think the, the distinction is very important. I'm going to borrow a model that you, some of you may have seen before, but it's called the slope of value. Uh, your typical system starts off on the lower end of your slope of value, and it's a, called a system of record. Now, if you just use your system to enter, like I said before, to cut checks and to pay people, and that's all you need it to do, then you're, you're, you're lowest on the slope of value because you're just using your system as a system of record. Um, this is typical of, of new systems that have come out in the 80s and 90s, even some of the earlier versions of PeopleSoft were, were more geared towards a system of record. If you want to move up the slope of value, then you go to a system of engagement. And I think, you know, uh, with some of the, the early releases, even within some of the stuff in 9.1 and certainly in 9.2, it gets you there. And what I mean by engagement is your system is built to engage your user community. That's your internal users or even your customers. So it delivers things like mobile mobile applications or self-service if you want people to fill benefits information online. It's got delivered you know, automated workflow with automated approvals. So it really works to engage your users and it saves your business money in doing that. And it also in increases your footprint. The third option to move up in the slope of value is what they call a system of insight. Um, and here's where the system not only looks at, it looks at all the transactions you're entering, but it looks and it mines the data. So you've got analytics, you've got dashboards, you've got, you know, really enhanced reporting and 9.2 really excels at this. So it's taking all the information in your system and it's, it's giving you the ability to strategize for your business based on that information and the grouping of reports. So, you know, obviously we love to get you at a system of insight, but we understand that, you know, not everyone wants to, uses their system for that. And a lot of people are kind of in the middle, but I just wanted to lay out, those are kind of your options for how you treat your system is either transactional or, or, or system of insight. So for the, for this option, I wanted to talk a little bit about the the, the cloud roadmap. So if you're, if you're going to, if you're making the decision or you're looking at, at cloud, uh, you probably know this, but this is the cloud model, right? You get on the cloud, you're going to get releases throughout the year. Uh, you know, it's automated. There's no big upgrades. Um, so you get these releases delivered. Now you have some flexibility of when you can, you can, you know, install the, the release, but that's basically your cloud model, right? So if you're evaluating going to the cloud, you've probably seen this and you, you understand the release model, the, the, excuse me, the release model. But I want to do the same thing with the decision tree. Again, let's start with, the, with the, the pricing, right? The cost. So in this model, you have software license and you have implementation, co implementation costs, right? So your software license is something you, you need to evaluate is what's the price of the software as a service license versus your on-premise maintenance fee. You also have to look at implementation costs, right? Is the cost of implementing uh, in the cloud versus PeopleSoft, what's, what's better for you? What's cheaper? So those are the two software, the, sorry, the software and implementation pricing. Uh, but you also have technology factors that you have to look at, right? Infrastructure is a big one, right? I think, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, realize that going to a cloud model, you can sit, hopefully save an infrastructure, you can shut down servers, you may not have to upgrade them. So I, I do see a lot of emphasis on infrastructure. But surprisingly, I don't, we haven't seen enough focus on integrations because this is a big factor. And you have to really understand the integration, uh, you know, complexity of what you're doing. You know, the cloud delivers a lot of different tools for integration, and you may have already built a lot of integrations into your current software. So if you're doing a really a true mix to look at an ROI, you have to look at not only the software license and infrastructure savings, but integration. And that could be a cost savings or, or a cost burden, depending on what you have now. 
The third factor, again, it comes as a strategy, right? Um, look, if you're, you know, if your CEO comes to you and says, okay, I want all systems on the cloud, well, I guess you're being delivered a strategy right there. There's, st there's still a lot of different intricacies with that, but you're, you're getting the set strategy set. However, you also have to look at functionality comparison too, right? Um, uh, just uh, you know, so everyone knows, we, we run the cloud internally here at BTRG. We've implemented for our customers. Uh, as well as with, as people saw, so we know the comparison very well, and I think you know people are would be very impressed with what what the cloud does as well as what PeopleSoft does. But you have to look at that. That's part of any uh, you know any decision or evaluation you do. So those are the three factors. I'm sure there are more, but I just wanted to lay out the big one. And if you take nothing else from this, please don't forget the integrations. It's it's a key aspect of, of any price comparison. If you want more information on this, because again, we're, we are gonna focus when, when Don comes on, on, on really on the PeopleSoft upgrade, but if you're interested in more information um, on how to migrate to the cloud or decision points, I just pulled out these two things from our website. The first was a, uh, a webinar we delivered in December, could I, should I, would I move to the cloud? I think it's very insightful. I think you'll get some great information from that. I also pulled out a, a blog series that uh, Mike Martin has done. This is a four-part blog on the top 10 reasons to move to cloud. So again, I encourage you to you know, visit our website, uh, download this, uh, read through our blogs, or again, just reach out to us if, if this is a direction you're interested in. Okay, the third option, this is kind of where we get to the, to the meat of the presentation that we're gonna do. But I wanted to start it out by saying, you know, looking at the, the health of PeopleSoft, and PeopleSoft is very, very healthy right now. You know, they have over 6,500 customers globally. It still represents significant revenue in, at, at Oracle of 1.3 billion. And a really big thing with upgrade to 9.2, or once you're on 9.2, is that multiple updates are delivered through the, the, uh, the PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft Update Manager. And that's an important, I'm gonna get talk a little bit more on that, and Don is as well, but just to, to lay the foundation for that, if you don't know what it is, is these are multiple updates that are delivered throughout the year. So it's, it's very similar to a cloud model, is, is how PeopleSoft 9.2 is delivering updates now. And you, you may probably already know this, but there's not gonna be a 9.3, right? This is the new model, you're on 9.2, and these updates are delivered. The one great piece of news, it's not really breaking news because it was announced two or three weeks ago, but Mark Weintraub from Oracle made the announcement that the PeopleSoft Premier support, which is your top level support for PeopleSoft, is gonna go through at least, and he stressed the at least 2027. So you now have a 10 year window here that Oracle is committed to Premier support going forward. So I think that's a fantastic news for, for PeopleSoft customers. Um, also the benefits. I could do, or we, and we have done you know, webinars just on this one topic alone, um, but what I try to do is go in and pick up what I think are the really important benefits you have. The first one, uh, we're gonna hit on it again, is that pump, product update manager. It, it truly changes the nature of, of upgrades going forward, and it's, it's a huge benefit. Once you're on 9.2, it lowers the cost of adoption across the board. The second thing I wanted to hit on is the UI, and Don will talk a little bit about this as well. But with the introduction of a new fluid UI, um, it makes you know um, training easier, adoption easier. The pages are much easier to, to navigate. You can pick up your, your phone, your iPad. You can get all pages displayed on, on a portable device, so it's, it's fantastic. Um, the, other, the third benefit of just the new features and functionality, I, honestly, I didn't even know where to begin with this. If, if you're on 9.1 now, or even if you're on 9. Point, if you've seen 9.2 earlier versions, you're not gonna recognize PeopleSoft with the latest version. It's changed that much. The fourth thing I wanted to touch on, uh, just to lay this out there, because we're probably gonna have a, a webinar just on this, but the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager. So if you do make the choice to go PeopleSoft 9.2 and you wanna go in the cloud, this is a fantastic tool delivered by Oracle to manage that. Okay, so this is my last slide, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Don, but our goal for you is I wanna make sure, we wanna make sure as a, as a group and a company that you have all the information possible on PeopleSoft and cloud. I, I don't wanna say there's misinformation out there, but there's not always accurate information, I'll say, and, and some of the times the information is hard to find. Our goal is to make you, help you make informed decisions, and that by giving you the, the you know, unbiased, honest information. Look, we implement PeopleSoft, we implement cloud, we run it internally, you know, we know the systems. We wanna make sure that we're there to support whatever decision you make. 
by knowing the accurate information. So whether that's going to the cloud, whether you decide to go to PeopleSoft 9.2 on-premise or, or on the cloud, we want to support you. And if you do want to get to 9.2 as fast as possible, this is where we're going to support you, and, and Don's going to carry that forward and talk a little bit about the tools that we have to get you there. So Don, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thanks, Rob. Uh, first, I'll talk about some of the upgrade approaches. Um, since the release of 9.2 back in, what was it, March of 2013, we're seeing like three types of 9.2 upgrades in the marketplace. First, you've got the back to vanilla, which you, you go in, you analyze all of your customizations, uh, you see which ones you can remove, uh, the ones you can't remove, you might modify and try to make them the least invasive as possible. And this will, this will help out in the ongoing selective adoption when you're going through the, the process of applying new images <clears throat> and it'll make the impact much less. Then there's the transformational upgrade. And this is, this is one where you do, do the back, back to vanilla process as well, but it's, it's more of an extensive analysis and de design phase. As you're going back, you're doing a full fit gap. To, you know, do you still have gaps? Do things still fit? It's sort of a, a business process um, anal analyzation to do strategic process reengineering. Uh, like I said, the design and analysis phase is uh, fairly lengthy in this type of um, upgrade. And then you have the fast track that we're going to be talking about today. It's kind of a no frills. It's primarily a, a technical upgrade. And so since you're and, and in this in this process, you're not putting in any of the new functionality. You're just getting your current functionality onto a 9.2 platform. So the analysis and design phase is drastically reduced with the fast track. And, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So <clears throat> what I'm going to go through is uh, I'll talk about the environments that would be in the fast track upgrade, kind of just the core set of passes that we'll go through. Uh, the PUM image schedule, this is basically just to let you know how we're going to get you to the most current image at the end of the process. Uh, I'll touch on customizations and how we're going to handle those in the fast track. We'll look at reporting. Um, as most of you may know, Crystal is no longer supported. So fast track or not, we still have to deal with that. Uh, I'll talk about security. Uh, we have a couple of tools that we that help make this process of uh, implementing security fast and accurate. And then testing and the people uh test framework and how that can help in uh, your future PUM strategy. And then once you're live, we'll talk, we'll briefly talk about um, your PUM strategy. Again, I'll just touch on that because that's a that's another full webinar in itself. <clears throat> okay, in this. Um, in this schematic right here for the for the environment, um, this is the I, I don't say the minimum number, but this is the for the fast track the number of passes that we will go through. You got your initial pass that'll create your dev environment. We do a two test move to production for your system integration testing and for your user acceptance testing, and then a final pass that gets you to production. Um, at the top, you see this database only. Uh, um, database up here in the blue on the top that and it says tools 9.2 it says 9.0 data and this is just for first, for purposes of demonstration I just picked 9.0 there it could be whatever obviously whatever your release you're on but this this environment we take midway through the initial pass when you've we've upgraded the tools we take a copy and we have now your current database and structure but on a uh, the current release of tools what that does is when you're when you're going to do in your retrofitting and your developers, they have have a way to go back and transfer code when they need to from this database to the dev environment because they need to be on the same tools environment. So it's it's very handy to have during the upgrade process. And then like any other other upgrade, <clears throat> when you create the source that you see down here in the bottom out of your initial pass, we we take the scripts and we fine tune them and we break them out for parallel processing to make the whole process run a little faster. And so each of these subsequent test moves to production should get, should get quicker and quicker as things are fine tuned. And one other environment I would like to mention is training there on the, you know, for a fast track upgrade, typically there's, there's very little need for much training because you're not implementing any new functionality. You're not pushing out any new functionality to your users, but uh, because in, 
in Tools 855, you have to accept some of the fluid user interface. There's really no way around it. Back on 854, you had the ability to basically cut it on or cut it off and stay with classic navigation. <clears throat> but people's office, you know, driving people to to adopt the, the fluid navigation. So even in the fast track, you will have to do some training on the, um, the new fluid navigation. And I just want to touch on one thing about the fluid navigation. Uh, you know, a few years back when fluid first came out uh, and we were doing upgrades, the client community really didn't want to touch it. They were, you know, they looked at it, they were, I don't want to say afraid of it, but they didn't want to push this out to the user group. I guess they were afraid of kind of chaos, the big change, the change management challenge that it would be. Um, but now that it's a five five and the upgrades we've done in the last year and a half or so, the <clears throat> the people that are that are going to eight five five and they're actually embracing it, are finding that the the user community is accepting it quite well. Uh, you know, it, because it's for lack of a better word, it's more of a modern interface. And it's more in tune with what these users are seeing outside of the work environment, you know, on the internet and other applications they might use. So they're really, uh, you know, adapting to it real well. Once they go and once they go through their their process, their daily process of the work they do on a daily basis, uh, then they're they're pretty much um, they're in, you know, and they're loving it, and they would would never want to go back. Just wanted to throw that in there. Something we realized over the last year or so. Uh, now this slide, I just this is to let you know how we get you from how you end up at the at the end of the upgrade on the most current image possible. It might not be the very latest. So if you look here on the the far left, I mentioned the upgrade scripts to image 16. When you when you go and you grab the templates and the the upgrade instructions and templates uh, to get from whatever environment you are to 92, it's it's going to get you just to a certain image. Um, and, in the, and for this example, and these aren't actual real dates or anything on here, these are just for demonstration purposes, but let's just say that it, it gets you to image 16. Then when we do the initial pass, we create your dev environment, then we're going to apply whatever that current image is. In this case, let's say it's 21. So now you're, we're going through the development and everything under image 21. And then we go through retrofitting and so forth, and we get ready to do SID, and another image has come out. Well, then we will apply that new image to the SID environment during that test move to production. And, and the same thing for UAT, if another one comes out. But as you'll see here, you will still go live on image 23 because we have no more test cycles to go through. So we couldn't apply image 24 because we're already into UAT. And, and the only way you know, to get you as current as possible is to have some test cycles to get you there. So even though the scripts are only designed for, for 16 and through the life of the upgrade, when you go live, you'll be on, you'll be caught up as much as possible. And I just, uh, uh, on that slide, I'm sorry, it, it just shows down here, that he, these are the current versions for um, HCM and finance and ELM right now. Um, it seems on 21, 23, and um, like HCM, I know, I think there's uh, 22 is coming up in April, so sometime this month. Unfortunately, they don't, they don't give exact days sometimes until it gets very close. <clears throat> um, now for the fast track customizations. For the fast track, there will be, there's no new customizations, and the retrofits that we have to do will, will be done primarily by your staff. And that's kind of drives the range of the cost on the on the upgrade is how much of it can you do yourself, you know? And, and we're prepared to do as little or as much as needed um, in, in the upgrade. But we, you know, hopefully people that have a decent staff they can do most of them. They're familiar with the customizations usually anyway. So uh, you know, some upgrades where we are even doing new customizations, the the client will do as much as possible of the retrofits themselves. And during the during the upgrade, when we when we do the compare reports on the to start the initial pass, we typically go in and we find every object that's that's custom, that's kind of standalone, you know, records, SQL objects, fields, whatever, you know, all the objects, and we we mark all those to bring over. So we bring all those over in the upgrade process so that <clears throat> during the retrofit, the developers really only have to, 
to mess with the delivered objects that have been changed and retrofit that, it reduces the work somewhat, you know, rather than having to reapply everything that you've done. Um, and also in here, another thing that we, we don't do in the fast track is we don't do analysis of removal of customizations like you would have, say, in a uh, vanilla upgrade. But if it's an obvious bolt on and it's completely separate, we, you know, that's easy enough and we will uh, leave those behind if, if that's, if that's need be. Um, and then crystal reports, uh, <clears throat> you know, typically in an upgrade, this is, it's a great time to kind of reanalyze your, your reporting, you know, whether it's crystal or SQRs or anything, because reports, uh, you know, a lot of clients reports the same report they've been running for 10 or 15 years. Um, you know, the people that wanted it in the first place might have moved on. Processes in your business could have changed. So it's something you need to do periodically anyway. Um, and, and something we recommend in like a transformational upgrade that you go through a full analysis. Uh, but in a fast track, we normally would just bring reports what you got. We bring it to the next one. But because crystal reports is going away we have to address that in any in any upgrade now so we will um we will help out in helping and doing the analysis on your crystal reports and determining if you need it anymore or what what might be the best tool to use to to replace that report and for the ones that you're going to keep and you want the report the same as then you know uh, i'm sure all you know that um the tool of choice for people stock right now is BI publisher. And we've done, we've done quite a bit of work in, in BI publisher. We've had, you know, some clients we've had <clears throat> that we've come in and they just want us to convert all their crystals to BI publisher. They don't want to look at them, analyze them. They're just make the move. And we've done that. And then we've had other people that want us to come in and, and analyze it, you know, like we would do for these, for these reports here and determine what's the best tool. And in doing that, We've kind of in our in our BTRG reporting lab, we've we've developed a lot of um, app package app package classes and methods that we're using this process. And w right now, if you, if it's a crystal going to be our publisher and it's fairly small and not very complex, within a couple hours we can convert that report. And some of the more complex reports that have you know multiple groupings, a lot of running totals, um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, you know, really intense layout, we can do those typically within a day to a day and a half. We've really kind of gotten that process down. And, and what we're finding that a lot of people want to do in this, in this process is, especially at the manager and executive level, is, and, and this is part of the classes and methods we got to make this a bit easier, is when we convert it, we'll just have these reports generate a PDF and we'll email it to the, to the recipient. So, you know, the executives love just coming in the morning, not having to sign on to something and go and go to report manager and look for their report. They they just have an email there and they click on the PDF and open it up. They need to print it. They can print it there. That's been very popular. Um, and again, this this just like the customization goes back to staffing, uh, depending on your staff and how much you can do uh, and how much help we need to assist in, you know, makes the price vary just a bit. <clears throat> okay, now for security, um, we, we've we developed um, and, you know, over the last few years, we, we've come up with two tools that we, are, we use that really helps us uh, more quickly and more accurately get the security implemented. Uh, we have a security matrix generator um, that I'll talk about here in just a second. And then we have a security compare utility. This, this matrix will go out and um, it'll generate the security matrix and it'll include the new functionality in 9.2 up to the image we're doing and any of your customizations. And on the compare utility, what it allows us to do is you can compare security uh, from one point in time to another to see what's changed, or you can also compare uh, one database to another. Okay, yeah, and so <clears throat> this is a screenshot, and I apologize, I know you can't, it's probably hard to read this, it's kind of small, but this security matrix generator, the, we, we developed this a, a ways back and we were constantly kind of tweaking and enhancing it, but 
the, the reason we did this is every time we seemed to do an upgrade, we would, we would go in and when we got ready to do security, we would say, oh, who has a security matrix from another project, whatever, I need something to start with, you know, because nobody, you know, starts anything from scratch. So we would always get a security matrix and um, then we would go in and say, okay, there's new functionality. So we would have to go through it and add the navigation to all the new functionality. <clears throat> and then we'd have to look at, um, the client's customizations and what are all the navigations for that would go add that to the to the matrix so what we came up with here is we have the way this works is we have some some sql kind of massive sql that we run against the database um and then we take the output of it and there's what in the you can't see it here but probably the first worksheet on this this template is you you put that data into that first template and then we have macros that we run and it can take anywhere from depending on how big your process is you know maybe five or ten minutes to half an hour and you just kind of watch it work and, and what it does is it goes through and it gets all the navigation and it builds this matrix for you so on the left hand side of this one you can kind of see where it's the navigation to a page there and then up at the top uh the angled part across here those are permission list <clears throat> and then each of these worksheets down here you can see it says asset management, payables, and so forth. For, for each of those areas, it creates a, a worksheet. And it will do, and the thing I talk about like accurate, the thing is when we, when we do this, we do this toward the end of the dev process. And so all the retrofitting is in, it might not let's say be completely tested, but all that's in there. So the, the navigation and all the current functionality is in there. So when we run this against that, there's there's nothing else to add. It gets everything. And when I say everything, it even it even will create these worksheets down here for areas that you might not have. So if you don't have, like in this case, if you don't have payables, then you just right click and delete that worksheet. You know, we do that each time, but but it gets it gets everything that's out there. That's kind of part of what I mean by the accuracy. You're not you're not missing anything. And then the the next one <clears throat> is a compare utility we have and the, the the way this one came about is i don't you guys have probably experienced this at some time when you're you're doing testing or going through some kind of upgrade process is you you might do something in integration testing and it works fine and then you're then you go over and you're doing your uat testing and that same process suddenly doesn't work and and you go you know you go back and you start looking at what what happened and a lot of times it it turns out to be something changed in security um so we create we created this process of uh, using people code and people tools and so forth to that would take a snapshot of, of security so what you could do let's say at the beginning of sit or something and you go and you take a snapshot of security at that moment and you can do it periodically you could do it you know once a day or every week or whatever and have all these snapshots out there and then when you run into issues you could take another snapshot and so this compare utility you feed it the two snapshots you want to compare and i see from this example i think there's like maybe 32 uh records of security type records that it's going through and comparing and then it will it will present you with um a grid like this and highlighted what is the difference between the the two snapshots and it and it's it's really it, it was really helpful so <clears throat> then we decided there's another way we could use this utility um and another way we use it now is we will let's say you were on 90 and you were you were going to 92 we would go to the 90 demo and take a snapshot of the security tables there and then we would take your 90 production and take a snapshot of that. And then we feed those two in here, in here. And what that will tell us is any delivered roles or permission lists that you've modified. And so then we have a better idea because we're, we're always trying to get you to, to not have any modified roles and permission lists delivered, right? You want to clone them and make, make your own. So this gives us a good set of, uh, of differences when we're trying to now make a clone of a new role or permission list. <clears throat> And we want to see what it was you were trying to accomplish in your original modification. We can apply that to your clone then. So um, that that's also been a been a big help for us. Um, and then testing. Um, <clears throat> one thing we do provide 
in, in all of our upgrades and also in the fast track upgrade is we will install and configure uh, the PeopleSoft testing framework. That's a, a product that's really matured over the years. It's, it's gotten better and better. And we'll also provide you with a jumpstart set of scripts that are, uh, you know, against the core modules to, to get you going on using the uh, testing framework. If you're not, if you don't, you know, have it already. And this, this tool it becomes uh, very important when you start doing the selective adoption and, and you put together your PUM strategy. The, the cycle for going through applying new images, having, having a good set of test scripts that you've built up is, makes life a lot easier, makes that process a lot smoother and quicker. Um, so now, now we've, we've done all this, uh, we've, we've gone through the fast track, we got you on 9.2. Um, and even though it is a fast track upgrade, we do want to leave you in the best shape possible for um, to be in position to now have a have a fun strategy. Um, the functionality that we didn't apply in the fast track, you know, through having a we, we want you to be able to roll that out at your own schedule. And hopefully, based on the way we built security matrix for you and everything, you can almost just basically roll it out by opening up security. You can open up security on some some functionality, uh, <clears throat> do some training on it and roll it out, you know, fairly easier at, you know, at your pace whenever you want to. And, uh, and I'll talk about briefly in a second, the customization repository, we will populate and, and uh, configure the customization repository, which is part of the PUM dashboard now. Um, that, that will help as well on your future um, PUM strategy. And, th and then we want to iterate that you, you do need to define define how what's your strategy going to be for selective adoption going forward um, now this is a shot of the the pum dashboard i don't know if you guys are familiar with this or not you may be but uh this is this is a great tool what this what this does is um this can tell you where you are on the image releases so for example if you're on image 23 you know, if you ended your upgrade and you're on 23, and they're up to say 28 now, you can bring down that pump, that image 28, and this product will tell you where do you stand, like how much in between 23 and 28. Let's say you took some tax updates, so you you might have selectively picked a piece of functionality along the way or so. This can tell you how, where you stand, like what percentage of changes have you taken, and it'll it'll do it by product or by database. Um, to see where you are, uh, you know, and and if you see on the left hand side up in the um, column there, it, it mentions the um, the customization repository that I mentioned. Now, what the customization repository will do is you can take uh, projects of your you know of all your customizations. You can you can put multiple projects into it, but what we see most people do now is they'll They'll have one project. They'll merge all their projects of their customizations into one, and that way, when they're when they're doing new customizations or modifications or you know fixes on their system, and they create a project for that, they'll just merge that into their their customization repository project and put it in the customization repository. So what that does is, when you <clears throat> when you pull down, let's say we're, for this example, image 28 and you are going to selectively go get some some new functionality that you want first you know and you're going to build what they a dpk a deployment kit out of that so you, you're going through when you're selecting this functionality <coughs> um you you can once you've got that dpk built you can then bump it up against this this customization repository they call it a calculation process and you run that and it'll tell you of all of all this functionality you've selected to to implement here's how it's going to impact your customizations here's all the records sql whatever that are going to be impacted and it's a it's a great tool for uh planning out the implementation of that image and that dpk that you've created uh it, it you know it really lets you know how big or how small this of an endeavor you're about to go through for that um so you know like i said when we're done, we'll we'll have this we'll, this repository populated with how things stand at the end of that upgrade. 
Now, as I mentioned, um, and, and this, this ties in a little bit with what Rob had mentioned before about are you a, uh, do you look at your system as transactional or do you look at it as strategic? Um, when, when you decide on a PUM strategy and how you're going to apply new images as they come out, uh, there's a reactive approach where as the images come out, you're not just going and applying much functionality or anything. All you're doing is I've got a, I've got a, an actual bug and an issue I need to fix. I'll go get that. Or if there's, you know, must haves like regulatory and tax updates and so forth, that kind of would fits. And that's okay. If you're more of a uh, transactional, you view your system as more transactional, but if you're strategic and you, in your approach, uh, the proactive approach might be better where you will you will come up with a strategy and a schedule for the whole year of how you're what images you're going to take when and you'll have a methodology in place for going through that cycle um, and again like things like the test framework and those scripts are very important to have if you're going to be proactive because when you go through that cycle the testing is one of the you know it can can be one of the hindrances for time on getting that accomplished and the, the test framework really really helps that away but either way at, at the end of um, at the end of the fast track upgrade we want you in the best position for the future um, on I know, on going through with the, the new methodology for getting change into people solved hey th thanks Don um, I just wanted to, to just to kind of wrap this up with a, a one summary slide. I really hope the you know the message came through that we're here to support whatever direction you go, whether it's PeopleSoft 9.2, whether it's cloud, or, or whether it's a different direction. We want to be supportive of that decision. However, if it is 9.2, we want to make sure you know that we do have this low-cost option that will get you there as quickly and efficiently as possible. And it's not just going to get you there and and you're going to be in trouble. You know, it's going to position you, we think, very well for the future so that you can either choose a rollout new functionality like Don was saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, just a bare minimum or the full feature functionality, or if you want to move to the cloud from 9.2, we want to make sure you have all those options. So, so that's it in summary. Now I'm, I'm also going to anticipate one of the first questions we get and that's how much, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to commit to a number, but you know, we have seen, you know, the fast track depending upon the footprint that you have, of course, and, and you know how much support you need from us anywhere in the 300 to 600k range so i'll, I'll just throw it a range and you know uh, don't write that down but that's typically what we see so uh hey uh russ i'll hand it back to you if there's any uh, other questions no i think uh you guys did a great job and um we as rob mentioned you know we're certainly prepared to to help kind of anybody and everybody in, in whatever situation you may be so um there's our contact information there we'd be happy to talk to you about this on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis, as Rob said, you know, there's it's tough to really nail down a, a firm price as everyone's environment is different. Um, but you know, we can we can certainly work with you on an individual basis. And if you um, would like to have kind of a more customized conversation with a larger uh, team from your organization, we're happy to do that as well. So um, if you have any questions, please give us a call, reach out to us here, or respond to the invitation uh, that you received in the email, and we're happy to to discuss these items with you. Um, outside of that, we, uh, we will send out the webinar recording in the coming days and it will be posted on our website. Um, I would estimate by Friday. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Great. Thank you everybody.